read it, it's always there. And please take notes. But it says that I, 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 this week it was just so real because, you know, we done, we talk about all this up here today and remembrance and all this. But you know, God is amazing God. Amen? God is an awesome God. God is a... I could sit here and go, God is, and uh, we've been talking a lot about it on Wednesday night. Cameron, help me out. God is faithful, and God is love. Huh? God is love. Uh, God is what? God is merciful. God is. God is. God is. God is. We could go all day, right? Because when you talk about God, it means something different to everybody. It has some different meaning to every one of us. When somebody says, God is, how do we respond? God is Lord of my life. God is this of my life. God is love. God is faithful. God is mercy. God is forgiving. How many glad God is all those things? Amen. Amen. This week I was reading and I, I, I read on to a story that I had marked um, a long time back in the Old Testament that really, really set this in motion this week for me. But basically what it is, it's a story of showing that God is always there to help His people. He's always there to help His people. How many glad God's always there to help you? And in 1 first, first Samuel 7, 12, we're going to go there here in a minute, but I'm going to read to you a little bit, just a, a piece of this. They were on the battlefield, and, and years ago they, they had suffered a defeat, and Israel had, had pled with God for help. And let me tell you something, when you go to God and ask for help, He will grant you help, amen? He will grant you even not just help, but He will grant you a victory. And we find this story in 1 Samuel 7, 12, where that this story had happened, they had been defeated, and they cried out for help. And then they began to cry out to God, and God brought victory for them. And when God brought the victory for them, they built a stone. And, and this stone that they built, uh, we're going to read about it this morning. Uh, the, the scripture says that Samuel took a stone and he set it up between Mizpah and Sheen and called his name Ebenezer saying, Thus for the Lord has helped us. I don't know if anybody in here understands what I'm talking about, but the Lord has helped me out many times in my life. <laughs> He was with me even when I was a teenager. And Lord, everybody knows I needed Jesus then. Amen. And the stone pillar that called God's people to recall, and, and it, it, he put it up there for them to recall not only once, but to recall often, or as often as needed, to remind them that God is the God of victory. The time when God turned the events around in their in their lives, in the war, in everything that was going on, and defeated the enemy and gave them the victory. I don't know about you and I today, maybe I'm just talking to myself, but I really feel like there's many of us here that, that understand some defeat that's happened in our life. But so many people get stuck in the defeat. We cry out for help, and help don't come. Yeah, you know the story where the guy got to, got to heaven and he said, Lord, why didn't you send me any help? He said, I sent you a boat. I sent you a helicopter. I sent you all kinds of things out there for your help. And you turned every one of them down. Listen to me. The thing is, is, is God wants to help you, but we've got to be willing to let him. You know, that's the hardest part is letting God help. I'm just talking to you for a few minutes. I'll preach here in a minute. But every time an Israelite saw this Ebenezer stone, they remembered God's help in their past. God's help relied on today. God's help assured for tomorrow. 
This Ebenezer was a picture of the Lord's readiness to hear the cries and to save them. It served to remind them to where to turn for their strength and power and who to thank for their deliverance. So today, just as this Ebenezer stone called God's people to remember the marvelous things God has done in our lives. How many has God done some great things in your life? Say amen. The many ways that God has delivered them from the enemy and all the times he forgave their disobedience. Thank God he forgives that too. Amen. And the reminders of a specific God that led them out of bondage in Egypt. You know what? God didn't just lead them out of Egypt. He fed them. Oh, come on. You got to talk to me today. He fed them in the desert. He kept doing it over and over, even though they grumbled and complained. I'm going to kind of pause there. Do you know God is always going to be God, no matter how much you grumble or complain? I'm going to ask you a question. I was going to get down here in a minute to it, and I'll get back to it. I'm getting right on it. So I'm going to ask you the question. Your kids, your kids and grandkids, what God do they hear about? Let me ask it one more. Dwayne's God, thank you. What, other, what, what does your kids and grandkids hear about God? Not from anybody else, not from me, but from your home, your parents. The things that come out of your mouth is what you say about God is who they believe God is. When you get in your mouth and start saying, well, God is not answering our prayers. Well, then that plants a seed in the kids that God don't answer prayers. When we get in our moan and we're grumbling, complaining, going, God, I just don't know why you're doing all this to us. And God is so bad. And God's just taking this one and that one. And God just, we love to blame God for our own junk. Amen? Amen. Can we talk real today? Because I come to talk real. Amen? Because God is all these things. But what is God in your home? What is your kids and grandkids hearing? What the Ebenezer stone was set up for, why it was set up is because Samuel put it there so that his kids and his grandkids and his great-grandkids could walk by that stone and go, my God, my, my daddy, my grandpa, my great-grandpa, that God is who I want to serve because he gave my family victory. Come on, amen. Are you living in victory or are you living in defeat? What's your family see? What's your family hear? This is getting good. Amen. I can tell it's quiet. Many times over life, we grumble, complain over some of the most small things. Life could be a lot harder than what it is, but it's not. God could have just let back and said, Do what you want, see how it turns out. But that's not the God I serve. You can take it on your own for a little while. God will let you drive your own bus for a little while. Amen. God will say, go ahead. Go ahead. Try it. I'll be right here. When you get, when you get tired, I'll be right here. And God will let you go. But the Bible says that God said he would never leave us or he would never forsake us. Amen. My God is a faithful God. Amen. I don't know about you in this house this morning, but I serve a faithful God. Yeah. I don't just serve any God. I serve a faithful God. I serve a God that is well able to do above and beyond what I can ask or even think. Amen? In the Old Testament, the thing was, was to set up a lot of stones of remembrance. There are a lot of different stones that you can read about. And these memorials were there to represent the goodness of God and all that he has done. I, I just think about it in my life. How many memorials would I have sitting around if I could set up a stone for every victory that God has ever given me in my life, that he's ever given me in my life, if I could set up them stone. Because here's the problem. When we start going through something in our life, we don't remember that God brought us out before. 
We forget. That's what was the problem with children of Israel. Even though they had all these stones in front of them, they had everything they could look at, they still would forget where God brought them from and brought them through. And they would just be like, well, yeah, yeah, I, well, maybe God can. No, God can do it. Amen? Right. There ain't no maybe, if, or but. God can do it. Right. Do you believe it this morning? There's so many examples. The Lord commanded Joshua to set up 12 stones of remembrance to remind the Israelites. Not only to remind them, but to remind the future generation of God's faithfulness, His deliverance, and His provision. As I said a minute ago, our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren need to hear about what God is doing, not about what God is not doing. Psalm 78, 1 and 5 says, this is, the, this is the direction that we need to go. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to my words and my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, and we will not hide them from our children, or from their children, telling to the generation to come, what? The praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. Amen? Amen. What are we supposed to be sharing and passing on to generation to generation is what God has done. The praises of what God is doing in our life and going to do in our life. Amen? Amen. The question I come to today is, do we really know who God is? Because it's easy to say, I know God. It's easy to say, I know about God. But it's another story to say, I know who God is. And, and it makes me wonder at times if people really know who God is. Because, let's start at the beginning. He created everything. God is the creator of everything. He created man. He created woman. He created everything. The thing is, is that we forget to let God be Lord of our life. We let him be Lord when we need him, Lord. But other times, we want to be Lord. This is good preaching. Amen. Preach, Pastor. But God is so many times what we make him as what we call putting him in the box. We narrow God to this little bitty experience of what he might do and what he can do. And we, we put him in this box and we narrow God down to these little things that he can do. Do you know God wants to do bigger things than what we are allowing him to do? Amen. God wants to do some big things in your life. He wants to give you some big things in your life. But with the words of things that come out of your mouth, my goodness, God has got to live according to His Word. Amen? He's got to stay faithful to His Word. He cannot go against His Word. He cannot lie against His Word. He cannot do anything that, that the Word says He can or can't do. God has to stand according to the Word of God. Amen? It's His words. He said he would not lie. He would not tell us anything. And I began to look at the things that God is. I began to look uh, uh, for scripture and find what God is. Because I think many times we just think God's sitting up in heaven just twirling his thumb going, I hope you make it. Whoops, there went another one. <laughs> look at that. He fell again. <laughs> look over there. They, man, they're in a mess. God just sitting on his throne enjoying heaven. While we're down here on earth just fighting with everything we got. Come on. Anybody ever felt like that? Amen. Anybody else ever felt like that? Clay was honest. Amen. God's not sitting on the throne just doing nothing. But the Bible says that he's sitting on the throne and that he's got his son... And he, he, he's making intercession for each and every one of us. He's praying for each and every one of us. The next time you think no one's ever prayed for you, just know that Jesus is lifting a prayer for you today. Amen? Because the Bible says he sits at the right hand of God making intercession for each and every person. Amen? He loves every one of us. He would that none perish, but that all come to repentance and have everlasting life. How many, how many know that that's what God wants us to have? Amen? 
But see, the thing is, is many times we don't want that because that means change. That means I'm going to have to do some change and I'm going to have to let God be God and I'm going to have to make some change. I don't want to change, Pastor. I like my life. I love my life. I love what I like. I, I do what I want to do. And that's the problem is that you haven't allowed God to be God yet. He can do so many greater things in your life. <laughs> In 2 Samuel twenty two seventeen, 17, it says, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in that day. The Lord has delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my... Who is God? He is my rock. Who is God? He is my fortress. Who is God? He is my deliverer. Who is God? He's the God of my rock. Who is God? In Him will I trust. He is my shield. He is the horn of my salvation. He is my high tower. He is my refuge. He is my Savior. And He has saved me from all kinds of stuff. And the Bible says violence. He has saved me from so much stuff that I can't even give Him a half a praise like He deserves. Come on, amen. Would you give Him a praise in this building here this morning right now? Come on, amen. <laughs> God is all these things. And verse 4 says, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Amen. That's not your wife or your husband or your kids. That is what you're talking about. The enemy of all enemies. Satan himself wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. Let me tell you, your enemy is not your neighbor. Your enemy is the devil. And he hates you. He hates your family. He hates everything about you. But God said, I love you. I'm faithful and I deserve all the praise because I've been protecting you. I've been protecting your family. I've been protecting your kids. I've been protecting your husband, your wife. I've been protecting even your boyfriend or girlfriend that you don't even know you got yet. I've been protecting them. I've been keeping them for such a time as this. Church, I don't know about you this morning, now, but my God is faithful. Amen. Come on and give him some praise in this building. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. A preach hit me real quick. Amen. Woo! My my granddaughter, she she's the youngest one in, and she's what she's two, right? And uh, I'm getting all these grandkids' ages, and I'm gonna have to. I got another one coming Thanksgiving week. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. But my 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 two year old, she 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 says, "Papa," and tells me, "Me, I'm gonna go pr I'm preach. I'm gonna preach." So she goes in her, she'll say, Papa, I won't preach in my princess room. And I say, okay, let's go to your princess. We went in her princess room the other night. She got her a step out. And she stepped up on that step. And she said, oh, God, I have my Bible. So she goes over in her bucket and she picks out her Bible. And she comes back and she gets on her little step stage. And she goes, Papa, I'm going to preach. I said, okay, preach. And she says, what, she says some words. And, but as she's saying these words, she goes. <laughs> and I'm like, I asked Jennifer, I said, do I stomp my foot? <laughs> because she's preaching like, she'll say, I say you're, pre you're preaching like Papa. That's what she'll tell. She's preaching like Papa. She'll do this. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't know I ever stomped. But I asked Jennifer, I said, do I stomp my foot? She said, I don't know, but maybe so. And then the day I just realized as I was preaching, I stomped my foot up here. Amen. <laughs> so I know where she got it now. I know that she's been, she seen me. She's been here just a few services. And some of y'all don't even notice that. But my two-year-old got it. Amen. Yeah. Some of y'all need to go home and get you a stage and preach in the mirror and say, the Lord is my rock. And the Lord is my fortress. And the Lord is my deliverer and he's the God of my salvation. He's my high tower. He's my refuge. He's my savior and I will give him all the praise. Come on. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Some of you will get up in the morning. Oh, it's Monday. No, you walk in that mirror in the morning and go, it's Monday and devil you better be afraid because I'm alive. This is a day the Lord has made. And devil, I'm about ready to rejoice. And I'm going to be glad in this day. Because the Lord is my rock. And the Lord is my fortress. Come on. I don't know about you this morning. I said, do you know who God is? Do you know he's all those things to you? When the waves of death has compassed me. There's some of you in here that God has protected you from death more than you know it. He's been there protecting you from death. 
And some of you didn't even realize who it was protecting you. But right now I'm giving you the person who God is. Who's the one has protected you. Death had knocked at possibly even the door. The floods of ungodly men and women. This is scripture. I'm not just preaching any little thing. It says, When the waves of death compass me and the floods of ungodly men make me afraid. When the sorrows of hell compass me about and the snares of death prevented me. But in my distress... In everything that I was going through, I called upon the Lord because I know who God is. Are you hearing me this morning? I called upon the Lord and I cried to my God. And He did hear my voice out of His temple. And my cry did enter into His ears. Come on. Amen. I have many reminders today that my God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord in Deuteronomy 7 9 it says now therefore that the Lord thy God he is God everybody say he is God and he is the faithful God which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations amen oh see it don't matter what generational junk has come down your life you can make a change in it and say my generation my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids and great great grand and great 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 and a thousand generations I bless them and I pray blessings over them in the name of Jesus amen, amen. but the Lord in 2nd Thess Thessalonians 3 3 says but the Lord is oh y'all got quiet but the Lord is who shall establish you and keep you from what? Evil. First John 1 John 1.9 says that if we will confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And I love this one because people always tell me, well, you don't know my love. You don't know what I've done and what I've done and what I've done. There ain't nothing too bad for Jesus. Well, I've done some bad stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> Great. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen? But God is faithful to those. God is faithful to those that will confess their sin. We love to confess our sin when we're telling other people about it. Well, I'll tell you what I used to do, man. I used to do, man. Well, ain't nothing, brother. I've been doing blah, 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 blah. Well, ain't nothing at all. I mean, I used to blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, I, man, I tell you right now, man, I used to, I used to be the, I used to be the bad of the bad. Amen? I used to be the, the, and the bad's good today, so I don't know what to say. It's good, I don't know what to say. Amen? But I'm just saying that the thing is, is we literally come to a place in our life that we think we did too much bad for God to forgive us. But the Lord's faithfulness is if you will confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of them. Amen? Amen. Don't go around confessing to your friends and your family and trying to be all that when you're not all that. And you know Jesus is more than that. Because Jesus has done a lot more than any of us. Amen? Amen? He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many of us can look back over the years and see how God has come through for us in our lives? You ever, you ever thought about it? Remember, God has been faithful. Amen? Amen? We ended last service with praise. And I'm not doing it today, Christy. No, 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 no last minute thing today. But we ended last Sunday service with praise. And the Bible says that every word that proceeds out of my mouth, let it be praise upon my lips. And all of you have, have, you know, have done this, I believe. But we need to walk our daily lives, not just walking around, but we need to know who God is. Amen. He's your rock. I had a bad day. He's your refuge. Come on, amen. amen. Psalm 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord. Who put that in there? I will bless the Lord at... You, you know how we usually read this scripture? I'll bless the Lord when I feel like it. 
I'll bless the Lord when He does something for me. I'll bless the Lord when He comes through. I'll bless the Lord when, 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 when so and so changes. I'll bless the Lord when, when, when that mouth or this mouth shows up. Amen. I'll bless the Lord when this or that happens over at my job. I'll bless the Lord this or that. No, no, the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My question is, church, when you go to work on Monday, do people hear praise or complaining and grumbling? I thank God for my life. I thank God for my job. I thank God for my boss. Well, you don't know my boss, Pastor. Well, I had a few of them, and I tell you, I had to thank God for them anyway. Amen? I thank God for them. Amen? They, they ain't always a good boss. They ain't always working right. Things ain't always going the way it should. But God is faithful and just to do what He says He's going to do. Amen? He will do it. But there's one question. Blessing the Lord at all times check check yourself tomorrow <laughs> you get tomorrow going through the day and <laughs> am I being real now <laughs> anybody ever had a moment like that <laughs> some of you are like just this morning <laughs> but, uh, but but really we have them moments in our life I know uh, working in the workforce for many years but in my last job I worked as a district manager and I I would travel and do all these things and man, employees just frustrate you sometimes. You know, they they know that they know you only got one person that day and they call in. Because they got they, they stumped their toe. Oh, y'all don't know anybody like that. Come on now, I'm just preaching. They call in, I was sneezing all day long. <laughs> you know. But I was sneezing too. <laughs> But I went to work. Come on. Come on, church. Are you with me this morning? We always find something to complain about. We always can find something to grumble about. But at the end of the day, we need to look in the mirror, look in our life, and look at the things that's going on in our life, and look at all the people around us, and look at all the good people that God's put in our life. And we need to be thankful for those people that's in our life. And we need to bless the Lord at all times for His faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Bless Him for His faithfulness. What the Lord has done for you. You should have a lot of praise coming from those lips. Amen? Some of y'all, as I said a minute ago, shouldn't even be here today. But you're here because of the mercy of God. Amen? He has never failed us. You say, well, Pastor, you, don't, you, you need to come to my house because God has failed me many times. Really? You going to go that way and tell me God failed you? So how do He fail you? He didn't give you what you thought you needed at that moment. He didn't give you the very thing that you thought he should have done. He didn't do it your way. Oh, that's right. It's not your way. It's God's way. This ain't Burger King. This is King of Kings. I heard CJ say that a few weeks ago. I stole it, CJ, just then. But Burger King, this ain't Burger King. This is the King of Kings we're talking about. Amen? You don't get it your way. You get it God's way. Amen? And His way is not always the very way that we like it. Amen? But the way that we get it is going to be good for us. And He's protecting us. And He's keeping us from something that we don't even see. Amen? But many times we won't do it our way. So God has failed you? Let's ask that question again. God failed you? He's never failed you. He's never failed you. Now, I'll take this in. I'll, I'll take this from you, that we have failed God. Amen. We have failed God. We fail to be faithful to God in many, in many areas of our life. We fail to be faithful to God in many areas. Don't make me preach on all of them too, amen? But we have failed in being faithful to God. But we love to put the blame on God and say he's not faithful. Amen. But how about if one day God come down and just showed us how we wasn't faithful to him. Yeah, I read my word and how long? You haven't prayed? You haven't even talked to me. The only thing I get out of you is all the complaints. 
How about your spouse if all you told them was all your junk? All the time, that's all you heard. You never heard. Baby, I love you. You're awesome. You're amazing. But I just said to her, well, you ain't gonna believe, you ain't gonna believe, you ain't gonna believe, you ain't gonna believe, you ain't gonna believe. So you go, you been in my house? <laughs> Don't be nudging each other, I'm telling you, that's not a good time, amen? But, but the thing is, we, we, we want to blame God for all these things that He's forsaken us, and yet we have not been faithful to Him. We have forsaken Him in so many ways. We forsake Him in all kinds of ways. Amen? Amen. But bless the name of Jesus, we'll be faithful to anything in this life besides God. (laughs) Don't make me travel this road. Y'all just need to say amen real loud and let's get this over with. Amen? Amen. (laughs) There y'all go. Look at you. Look, done. We're out. Amen. Let's get out of this. (laughs) But faithfulness to God. <laughs> Faithful to God though. We so many times fail in them areas. We, we fail. We forsake Him. We fail by not doing the things He asks us to do. To be a witness. How are we going to witness when our life is a mess? Hey, you need to know my God. Nope, don't think so. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm real good. (laughs) Run. (laughs) Things that come out of our mouth about our God, people are listening to. Is that the God that they want to serve? I sure hope so. I sure hope the one you're talking about is faithful. Amen. I sure hope the one you're talking about is amazing. I hope the one you're talking about is your rock. He's your fortress. He's your deliverer. Amen. God is faithful. And he sent his only son to redeem us. How many is thankful for that? Amen? Amen. Today, no matter whether it be through jewelry or through where, but there is one Ebenezer stone that remains, that remains strong. And that is the cross. Amen. I'm going to say it again. The cross stands strong still today. Amen. The cross is still the reminder of what Jesus did for us. Amen. How many know if you ever wonder if God's faithful? God, the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. My God is faithful. He, When there was no way for man to be free of sin, He sent the redemption plan. He sent His only Son, the perfect Lamb, to die for our sins. But that ain't where it stopped, church. That's the first reminder we got. But then we go on down to the grave. Because on the third day, God said, I'm going to bring you out of that grave. And he rose up on the third day, giving us a promise that we would all live forever in eternal life. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I know who my God is. Do you know who your God is? My God is a victorious God. My God is a God that keeps His promise. My God is faithful. My God is loving. His cross, the stone of help for us, it assured us that our sins of past have been forgiven completely. As so sins of today, tomorrow, will be forgiven in the same way. Just as God has been with you and me in my past, He will remain with you and I to help us in our future. He's going to strengthen us, bless us, not only now, but He's going to bless us in our future. Amen? (laughs) I said He's going to bless us in our future. And remember when He does, give thanks. But before He does, give thanks. That's where we usually miss it. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, where are you? God, God, where are you? I need your help, God. I need your help, God. I need your help. Never, Lord, I thank you and I know you're faithful. 
And God, I know you're going to answer my prayer. And Lord, I thank you for it already. I thank you for what you're already doing in my life. I thank you for what you're doing in my family's life. I thank you, God, for what you're about to change in my kids' life. I thank you, Lord, right now. Come on, let's get a praise in the building. Amen? And thank him for what he's about to do in your life. The last passage of Scripture, Christy, if you'll come this morning. This passage of Scripture is one of my favorites. It was an early time in my ministry. Uh, me and Jennifer was living in our second home that we lived in. Our first rental home was uh, about a year of chasing mice. We moved here from Van Buren. Brand new home to... Woo. And um, we moved in that home and we killed multiple mice moving in and some of you might have mice and it's all right they they're friendly <laughs> they'll eat your food for you don't worry um but then mice we moved in and they man they were killing them left and right and jennifer i'll never forget she came in and her couch and there was a mouse sitting on the couch my wife's freaked out by that kind of any kind of any kind of creature almost any animal like that. That's why I'm so gentle. She loves me so much because I'm not such an animal. Amen. But anyway, <clears throat> just saying. But the but this mouse this mouse was sitting on the couch. Jennifer walks in, and she sees that mouse on her couch, and something rises up in Jennifer, and she goes over and she gets the she gets a spirit of slap, and she, <laughs> and then she's like, oh, he ran under the couch. I'm like, okay, well, let's lift it up and get him out. So we lift up the couch. I don't see him. I don't see him either. I said, well, set the couch down. I set it down, and we heard, Krish. I got him. <laughs> you say, what's that got to do with an ending of a service, Pastor? Many times in our life, we don't have no spirit of slapping us anymore. Amen. The enemy has taken it all out of us. He sets up everything against us and we just accept it. We just let it be. Okay. Okay. All right. That's the way life is. That's all life's going to be. Sometimes we need to get a spirit of slap and say, that's enough. And get the Word of God. And say, the Bible says that my God is faithful. Knock him off, lift the couch up, and squish him. Amen? But we moved in our second home. We pastored our first church. We came here, and it was, a, it was an old trailer house with a block building beside it. We moved in that church and seen growth after, didn't we, Vern? Just saw growth after growth. I mean, just amazing things. And uh, I was going through a time in my life after, after this, in this ministry. Had a pastor friend call me out of the blue. Didn't have a cell phone back then. They couldn't text me. <laughs> so he called me on the old phone. He said, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, oh man, just, whew, just a time in my life right now I'm going through. And he said, I felt like this scriptures, this passage of scripture was for you. I said, well, shoot it at me. So he shot it at me. It was a good word. I received it. And it reminded me who God is again. Even at the lowest moment of my life, at the lowest point when I thought it was all done, everything in my life was just going to be a mess. God shows up and shows His faithfulness. God shows up and shows His faithfulness. I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what's happened in your life. But I do know somebody that does. <laughs> because God has been there every day of your life. He's been watching over you. And let me tell you something. He'll give you the word that you need at the right time. Amen. And I felt like this morning I wanted to end the service by sharing that story with you. And from that point forward, I began to step back up. And God began to use me, began to see things go in, our, in the ministry and just see things take a big step forward. 
and watch God just do things in our life. We went from, you know, the place with all the mice to a little nicer place, and that was full of snakes. Bit my dog. I mean, come on. Then we moved. Then we move out to another place, and then finally move into the place we are. See, the thing is, I never want to forget where I come from. See, when I first started, me and Jennifer got married. He said, Pastor, why are you telling all these stories? I want you to know something today, that God is faithful. Is times easy? Time ain't always easy. But God is always faithful. Everything ain't like I like it to be. But God is always faithful. We started, when we got married, we were just young. And I'll leave it like that, just for the family and teenagers' sake in here. Amen. No, I'll tell it, don't do it, teenagers. My wife was 16, going on 17. I was 18, going on 19. I did not rob the cradle. She's only two years younger than me. Don't let her fool you. Amen. I tell you these things because we started out in an apartment just based on the income. And my income was $4.25 an hour. Working at the furniture store. And I first, we bought our first two-piece sectional. Oh, man. It was so beautiful. And then we bought a 27-inch TV. We, God is faithful. And we got finally rid of that water bed and got a real bed. Man, God is faithful. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in here? And then she made me get rid of my Chevelle because we had a baby. But God is faithful. And we got an Oldsmobile Brom. It wasn't Brom's dairy either. Amen. Color Supreme Brom, man, it was it was nice. We gave a thousand dollars for it. We sold my oh, we gave fifteen hundred. We sold my car, my Chevelle. Let me tell you that. God help me. We sold the Chevelle for a thousand dollars. And we borrowed 500 off my grandpa. And he said, y'all, the only kids at that time, I'm going to say that, at that time had ever paid him back. We paid him that $500 back. We got a car, man. We were luxurious. It had 100000 but hey, man, we were luxurious. It was comfortable, man. You could sit down in them seats and oh, it was comfortable. And Brad had air conditioning. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. But I want to tell you that story. Don't ever forget where you came from. But to know where I am today, my God is faithful. My God has blessed me. My God has kept me. And it ain't just the material things that He gave me that made me blessed, but it is the things He's given us through our life. My kids, my grandkids. Come on, my grandkids. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you, God is faithful. Amen. It doesn't matter what you drive. It doesn't matter where you live. All that matters is that my God is faithful. Amen. And He knows you're in, you're out, you're, you're up. When you get up in the morning and when you lay your head down at night, God knows everything about it. Amen. I want to give you a word this morning. Can I give you a word this morning? This is a word that came to me many years ago. Psalm 103, 1 through 5. You say, Pastor, I've read this before. And I hope you have. But let's read it today in a different way. Will you read it with me? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. And I like this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all my junk and who heals all my diseases and who redeems my life from destruction and he crowns me with love and kindness and with tender mercy and who will satisfy my mouth come on you got to get the mouth fixed who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles amen come on this morning if you receive the word stand to your feet this morning come on give him a praise that's all right. Give him a praise. Come on. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord.
We bless your name, Lord, today. We bless your name today, God. The time of prayer this morning I want to do is a little bit different to the norm. I usually give an altar call and go through a process today. But today, if you want to stand where you are, that's fine. But I encourage you to do something different today. But it's okay if you don't. If you just want to stand there, you can. But I feel like there are people that, that just, you just need to be encouraged. You just need to be lifted up. You just need the prayer. You just need somebody to speak over you this morning. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I, I wasn't going to. Lord, just, just quicken me again. If you'll, if you'll just close your eyes just for a minute. I just want you today. I want you today to, again, be honest. Not with me, but with God. If you're here today and you know God's been faithful to you, but you've not been faithful, but you want to be faithful. You say, Pastor, I want to be faithful. I've not been faithful. I've been failing in some areas. But I, after hearing this word today, God has really touched my heart. And I want to be faithful to Him. I really want to be faithful to Him. I'm not going to ask you to come, but I'm going to ask you to lift your hand right now. I can't count the hands. Just keep them up there this morning, if you will. The hands are lifted across this building. I'm going to ask everyone else that feels comfortable with this, but if you will lift your hand, but mainly lift your heart to God today. And we're going to pray with these across this building. Everyone's going to agree this morning. Maybe you didn't lift your hand, but now it's lifted. Or maybe now your heart's lifted. And you're saying, Pastor, that's for me this morning. I'm going to receive mine. Today, we're going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I pray over this house. I pray over every hand that was lifted. God, that you would be faithful this morning. You are faithful, God, to them. And you're going to be faithful in another way today. God, help them, the desire, the things they need to change and want to do and be greater at. And God, whatever it is that they lifted their hand for this morning, God, help them. Help them get to that place to receive your promise. To know, God, that without a doubt in their mind and their heart, God, that you or who you say you are. You are faithful. And God, today, Lord, if there's anybody here today that you have any sin in your life, any sin in your life today, I, I, I'm going to go this way. I, I, I just didn't plan this. I'm just going to tell you. It just hit me now. If there's anybody here that, that you say, Pastor, I've got sin in my life that needs to be removed out of my life right now, would you lift your hand quickly? Come on more hands up across this building sins that sins that trap you sins that are holding you down keeping you held back today is your day of freedom amen God said that if you will confess your sin he is faithful and he is just to forgive them so I want you today I, I'm, I'm going to pray but before I pray I'm going to give you just a moment and you don't have to confess it out loud to me. Thank you, Jesus. But you need to confess it to Him. Right now, I'm going to give everybody a chance. If there's any sin in your life right now. So what's sin, Pastor? Anything that separates you from God. How about this? What is sin? It's even unforgiveness. Right? Anything that separates you from God. Sin. Sin. Don't let it dwell. Don't let it be there. Don't let it stay there. So today, out of your mouth, whisper it out of your mouth. I want you to say it. If you got to say it under your breath or say it out of your mouth or however you got to say it, I want you to confess. Not to me, but to the Lord today. I want you to confess your sin right now. Come on, I'm going to give you just a minute. Confess your sin. Confess your sin right now. Come on. Some of you may have a few sins you need to confess. I'm going to give you a minute. Come on. Some of you have, may have more than that. I may, I may have to take a few more minutes. Come on. Confess those sins. Confess those sins before God. Confess those sins. Today, right now. 
right now in this place, Lord, according to your word. There's not a prayer I need to pray because according to your word, you said if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive them. And Lord, today you have cleansed them from all unrighteousness. And Lord, today we thank you for it and we give you the praise that sins in this building have been forgiven this morning. Come on. Come on. One more time. Give him some praise, would you? We're praising a lot. You say, man, I praise more of that church than any other church. Amen. I'm going to get you practiced up. Amen. <laughs> we'll get you practiced up for praise. But today, as we close, I want you to take the person beside you. This is where I was actually going. I want to take the person's hand beside you. And I want you to say a prayer. If you got somebody on your right and left, it's going to take you a little bit longer. But I want you to pray for that person. I want you to pray a prayer of blessing. A prayer of love. A prayer of joy. A prayer of encouragement. You say, Pastor, do not do I need to know what they're going through? Well, a lot of times we'll ask and we go through that process, and I agree with that kind. But this morning, the way the Lord told me was just the person beside you, just that, just the bonding of somebody beside you, just that person beside you agreeing with you. Because He said, where two or three agree upon anything, it shall be done. When we agree in His name, and we're here to agree in the name of Jesus, amen? Where two or three agree, He said, I'm in the midst of them. Man, come on, God is here, amen? That agreement is powerful. And right now in this place, I want you to pray. As Christy begins to sing, I want you to pray. And I want you to pray across this house. I'm not going to say the prayer for you. I want you to pray. Pray for that person beside you. Come on, pray for that person beside you. Let them hear you. Let them know you're praying for them. Come on. for them. Thank you, Jesus. Shut 